I had my first panic attack when I was driving a car to go pick up someone. And I, I drove myself to the emergency room because I didn't know what was happening to me. Now, hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Angel the Psych MP. My name is Angel. I'm a mental health nurse practitioner. But before that, I went to Florida Memorial University where I got my bachelor's degree in psychology. Go Lions! Um, Florida Memorial University is HBCU in Miami, Florida, for those of you who don't know. I never really used a psychology degree because the job that I had working at the hospital um, in a mental health crisis facility was paying more money than I would make with a psychology degree. So I got the degree because psych has always been my passion. Counseling, listening to people has always been my passion. So I got the degree and never used it. Stayed at this mental health facility for about another 10 years. About 2006, I wanna say, I went back to nursing school and got a job at that same hospital, but not on a mental health unit. I was working on a level one trauma center in the ICU. That was my first nursing job. Absolutely love trauma. But it's still, uh, well, let me tell you, when you're working in the ICU, you do deal with a lot of mental health issues because those patients, sometimes they get, they're in the ICU so long, they forget things, it drives them crazy, the alarms all the time that they hear all night, just a lot of different things. But it wasn't like true mental health, what I really wanted to do. So I kind of got out of the ICU. Well, actually I got out of that facility and became a travel nurse. Now my mindset was, if I'm going to be making, working three days a week, making this money, and I can work the same three days a week in another area or another location, state, I mean city, and make more money, then that's what I'm gonna do. And that's exactly what I did. Around 2015, I got my first travel contract in DC. Obama was in office. Oh, what a time to be alive. DC was lit. I was working, making great money, and I was enjoying the city of DC. But around after six months of probably being in DC, I kept hearing about nursing in Cali, nursing in Cali, nursing in Cali. So I went to Cali, 2000, the end of 2015. In 2016, when I was in Cali, I went to a strike. And at that strike, when we would get off of work, there would be a bunch of nurses downstairs in the lobby. And in the lobby, they would be doing like paperwork and I went to this one girl and I'm like what is everybody doing she's like girl we all in school doing our nurse practitioner and I was like oh okay I was like eh. I really kind of wanted to be a psychiatrist but then I didn't want to go to M school you know to get my MD and all that because I didn't you know just too much too much school and I was already over school she was like girl go back and get your EMP so I started looking up the program and they had mental health nurse practitioner. So I'm like, great, this is a way that I can combine my nursing because I love nursing and I love mental health. So this is a way I can combine it in a different way without doing bedside mental health. That was in November, 2016. In February, I was enrolled into a program to do my mental health nurse practitioner. Um, oh, forgot this degree. I got my BSN from Alabama. Roll tight. So I had to get out of the way because that's one of my schools, but I got five degrees and sometimes I'd be forgetting about all of them. I have an associate from one school, then I have my ASN, which is associate in nursing from another school. Then I have my bachelor's in psychology from one school. Then I have my BSN, which is from Alabama. And then I have my master's degree in mental health nurse practitioner, which is from Walden University. So I have all my degrees now. I just finished that mental health nurse practitioner program in February of this year and then I and then COVID hit so that put me back at the bedside when COVID hit and then now I'm the lead nurse at a COVID testing site but I wanted to tell you a little bit about me how why I'm here and it's because I have a love for mental health and I think that the world needs to open up more to the acceptance of people with mental health so that people can come out of this darkness that they have that they shouldn't really be in. Most people are in the darkness of mental health because the world doesn't accept it. In the comment below, answer this question. If your homegirl or homeboy came up to you and said, hey, I'm hearing voices, 
what will, what will be your first what will be your response i'll wait a few minutes for you to think about that okay most of you probably don't know what you would say i can tell you some of the wrong things to say dog you on drugs that's the wrong thing to say another wrong thing to say is you on that lick you've been drinking or or just to laugh at it all of those things right there could make or break the situation with this person because now they have come to you with something that was dark that is very scary i'm sure to be hearing voices or seeing things and you respond with a laugh or a joke or something like that they will probably never say that again to nobody else and again then guess what happens to that person if they're hearing voices the voices will get louder and the you know probably start giving them commands or telling them to harm someone or even themselves and that's not what we want we want to be able to if someone comes to us we should all have some type of awareness where we can say you hearing voices okay let me you know let's see if there's a crisis area a hospital that has a crisis unit or let's see if we can get you some help let's let me look you know let me google some mental health resources in the neighborhood something like that could change that person's life versus you not saying it and they, they living in the dark because they don't know they don't want to be picked on they don't want to be the laughing stock of the family they don't want everybody calling around telling everybody what they're going through they just want some help and they thought they could trust you in that moment but you have just broken that if you if you say something like dog you you on that you on that coke or something like nobody you that's not the right response so i want to change the perception of mental health i want people to know that there is help out there we're and for our younger people or millennials or you know even the older people people want to be you know have this conversation sometimes with people that they feel they can relate to more relatable people i'm 40 years old i know when i was doing you know studying my psychology degree you know, when you see pictures and books of therapists and psychiatrists, you see old white men with bow ties on. I, they can't relate to me. I don't want to be talking to them because they, they, come on, they may know they, they may know their stuff. They may be smart, but that's, you know, we're in 2020. You want to be able to know that you're reaching out to somebody who's more relatable to you, somebody who you can relate to on a different level. You know, I went through anxiety myself. I started having panic attacks earlier this year, which was probably like a delayed grief response to my father's passing. Um, but my original, my first therapist I had, we we didn't relate. We couldn't relate. And even though she was a younger therapist, we just, I didn't, I didn't feel that vibe with her. Now my old therapist, my second therapist, she was an older lady, but she was able to help me get through it because she she listened she did something different from the first one but that will be different for everybody and i'm not saying a, you know a young person or somebody relatable is that perfect fix, fix for everyone but i just want people to know that there's someone out there that's young and youthful and still you know lives a good life and still does a whole bunch of things that you do that you can relate to that are still going through some of the things you went through when i first had my anxiety attack let me tell you, I was scared. I wouldn't go outside. I couldn't drive in a car by myself. I was scared. Like my cousin lived on the third floor in the apartment building that I was living in at that time. I lived on the second floor. Literally when I went outside to go walk upstairs to her house, I was shaking because I was scared to be outside. I was, and the fear comes from thinking you're gonna have another panic attack from the second floor to the third floor and there's nobody there. Like who's gonna be there? Because the, the things that you start feeling is like impending doom. So you like, okay, nobody's out here. Nobody's out here. Like what if I have a panic attack? So that thinking about what having one of those again creates this fear in you when i was driving i had my first panic attack when i was driving a car to go pick up someone and i, I drove myself to the emergency room because i didn't know what was happening to me now granted i'm a mental health nurse practitioner i had just finished school when this all happened but i forgot everything i learned when it happened to me because it had never happened to me before i'm like what the is going on for me 
when I started having my panic attacks and I only had, I had about three, I had about three in like a, maybe a three week time frame. I couldn't sleep at night. I was, it's like, as soon as I would try to close my eyes and go to sleep, my body would start trembling. And I had, I was out in LA at the time and I was staying in the extended state cause I was on a travel contract. I had to come back home. I had to end the contract because I couldn't do it. I wasn't getting any sleep at night and I was working in a recovery area and I would have to go the next day and take care of patients. And I couldn't, I was tired. Um, I was just so worried because you, I was trying to figure out what was happening to me. It was so fresh to me. And this was pre-therapy. And I'm like, you start thinking like, am I crazy? Like, oh, all the stuff you think, am, are you feeling, you know, like, and then different people, when you talk to them about panic attacks, everybody has a different experience. So some of them can relate to what you're saying and some people can't, um, but it's different for everybody. But overall, everybody has that fear. Sometimes, you know, you can't sleep at night. You worry, 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 worry about what's going to happen because you don't want to feel that way again. So we'll talk more about all type of mental health disorders on this channel. We will talk about how family can be supportive of someone with mental health because mental health, just like you will be there for somebody who has cancer or some chronic condition that you know that will eventually lead you know to whatever and how they need a huge support system mental health people need that you can't just diagnose your son daughter husband wife or whatever and think that okay i'm gonna put them on some medication and then that's it the medication some people do need medication because of different chemical imbalances or whatever it may be but some people they get therapy and get better but i think you everybody needs a combination of both some people just want to do the quick fix, which is medication, but we need to do the work because something is underlying sometimes with stuff like anxiety and, and depression. So return to my channel, like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. We'll have all things mental health on this channel. Um, you can ask me questions below in the comments and I'll get back to you as many people as I can. Yeah, that's what we are gonna do on this channel. So. Angel, the Psych MP. Mm -hmm.